All right, so Assalamualaikum, very good morning to all students. Okay, so today we continue our chapter number five, which is DNA hybridization. Okay, so uh, what actually DNA hybridization all for all about? Eh? Okay, so before we start our lectures, there what we call at the end of this topic, students should be able to, so you can identify the process of gene hybridization. Okay, number two, we able to list the application of the gene hybridization in the various fields. Okay. okay before we go further, there are we call introduction in these chapters. Okay, number one, the concept. Reanalyze nucleotide to identify sequence of interest. So reanalyze means we cantum kan dia, okay, between two nucleotides. Okay. Number two, separates DNA and RNA in agarose like gels then detect the specific bands using the probes and hybridizations, okay? So why we need probes? We're going to give a signal inside our nucleotide or nucleic acids, okay? And then we have to hybridize again, get the samples. So hybridization takes advantage of the ability of the single-stranded DNA and RNA molecule to find if complementary. So why we call it complementary? Because A will bind to T. C will bind with G, okay, in the terms of DNA. Eh? If we say about RNA, all T must change into U, right? Even in the presence of large amount of unrelated DNA. It allows detection of specific band, which is DNA fragments or DNA molecules, okay, that have complementary sequence to the probes. Size bands and quantify abundance of the molecules. Right, with uh, the first uh, method that we're using to hybridization in the process is what we call Salton blot. Okay, so this Salton blot is special for DNA to DNA methods, right? So it developed by uh, one of the scientists, what we call admin, Salton. So that's why the Salton's name comes, okay? So to visualize, to get the result, we have to use the gel electrophoresis. But together with the hybridization probes to characterize restriction fragments of genome, DNA or DNA for other resources such as plasmid. Okay. So identify DNA with a specific base sequence can be done to detect specific genes present in the cells. Okay. So these are the protocol how the process of certain steps were done okay certain blocks were done eh? dna to be analyzed is digested to completion with the restriction endonuclease okay so endonuclease can be some say about restriction enzymes so later for this is to maximally separate restriction fragment in the expected size range a set of standard of known size is run in one lane of the genes and then we have to blot the fragment eh? onto what onto the nitrocellular membranes okay we plot the simple eh? and then you have to hybridize with the 32 p okay probes so this one is very radioactive eh? right and then we use a, a machine or, or the tools to visualize our result is what we call auto radiography. Okay, step two. So we use gene electrophoresis for what? To separate DNA fragments. Okay. So if we say it's very big, it will go, uh, it will sink eh, ke bawah. Dia takkan naik ke atas eh, alright. If we say uh, to what we call apa, ringan, dia akan naik ke atas, right? So from here, if we say very heavy, dia takkan gerak ke sini eh, dia akan stop sini. So, yang ringan akan bergerak ke atas from negative to positive. So, please bear in mind, eh, DNA is eh, have a positive charges. And then you have to soak it with gel into 0 0.5 molar sodium hydroxide. Okay. So, this what for what? Eh? For, to convert double-stranded DNA to single-stranded DNA. Okay, now we have to blot it by using the nitrocellulose blot in the step 3. So we have to cover the gel with the nitrocellulose paper and then 
cover the nitrocellular paper with a thick layer of paper towels. Okay, it's a layer by layer, eh? right? And then you have to compress the apparatus with a heavy weight. You can pick any, put anything, eh? Buku pun boleh, eh? Ataupun uh, batu ke dan sebagainya, right? So the best is book lah, right? So single stranded DNA will bind to the nitrocellulose at same position it had on the gels. Okay. You have to use a vacuum dry nitrocellular at 80 degrees of Celsius to permanently fix DNA in a plus, place or cross link. Okay, so what happened to the cross link is the, because of the covalent bonds, the DNA to the membranes. Okay, so the picture show how the process of bloating happens. All right. So first of all, you have a gel electrophero, uh, ferrotogram containing DNA of interest, and then you have to put in the buffer solutions. So put some wick down there, and then put the nitrocellular sheets. On top of it, you have to put the paper towel and wedge it with the everything tools you can boleh buat bagi. Right? The best adalah kita gunakan books lah. Right? Okay, now we have to colorize or visualize our samples by using the 32 potassium labelled radioactive probes. Okay? First of all, we have to first of all we have to incubate our nitrocellular sheets with a minimal quantity of solution that contain 32 potassium labelled single stranded DNA probes. Okay. So this probe sequence is complementary to DNA of interest. Means that 32 P labels can be labeled to ATCG inside our sample here. That's meaning of complementary. Eh? So to make sure this work good or uh, make sure all the hybridization will happen, we have to incubate for several hours at a suitable renatured temperature. Okay, so mo mostly for renatured uh, temperature, we're using less than 50 degrees Celsius, right, or 40. That will permit probes to enable to its target sequences. And last one, we have to wash and dry our nitrocellular sheets. Now we have to visualize our samples by using the process of auto radiography in step number five. So place the nitrocellulose sheet over the X-ray film. Okay, so this X-ray film is darkened where the fragments are complementary to the radioactive probes. Okay, this is uh, general scheme, schemes or simplified the process of how the salt and blotted were done, right? First of all, you have a sample which is RNA or DNA, okay? And then you have 22 potassium labelled size marker put inside the well. Okay, this is example of gel electrophoresis. So we ran the process of electrophoresis, okay? So we put here positive this one is negative. Okay. So our sample will migrate and then we done the process of bloating. Okay. So there's a gel, salt solutions, nitrocellular filter, sponges, paper towel. Solution passes through the gel and filter to the paper towels. So we take out the Nitrocellular uh, blot, we get the DNA transferred to the filter. So that filter we call nitrocellular blot. So we have to do the process of hybridize with the unique nucleic acid probes. So what is probe? Probe is a 32 potassium. Okay. So filter in the seal a meal bag. So seal a meal bags mean filter punya cover plastic ni, right? So inside there we have a probes. So we have to remove unbound probes. That's why we get the results. Okay, probes will hybridize, hybridize to the complementary sequence. And last one, we have to visualize our samples by using the process of auto radio RAM. Okay. 
So we're using what we call X-ray film to the filter. So the, the light, source of light we're using a uh, UV light. Okay. Is there a question about the general scheme of salt and block? So here's one example of the how you're using the process of DNA hybridization. Okay, so like that. Tentang Southern Blot. Is there any question about Southern Blot? No, sir. Right, so we continue our methods, eh? Right. So why we need to do the Southern Blot? So the best way is to diagnose and detect the genetic diseases. Eh? One example of genetic diseases what we call sickle cell anemia. Okay, ataupun nama lain adalah sel darah merah kita berbentuk sabit. Why? Because they are what we call alpha and beta cell unit there. So this beta is a lack. Right? So that's why our punya, uh, our uh, uh, red blood cells structure bukan jadi bentuk sabit, right? So once our uh, sel darah merah tu bentuk sabit, so kita tak boleh dapat apa? Kita tak boleh nak cater ataupun get the oxygen. So oxygen will be get less eh. Instead of four, we get less than four. Right? That's meaning of sickle cell anemia. And a lots of dead cells, uh, blood, uh, red blood cells there will be uh, destroyed. Okay, that's meaning of anemia. Eh? Sikit eh. So we develop a dietin residue oligonucleotide probes complementary to the sickle cell genes mutated segment. Okay, to detect eh. So make sure kita ada probe yang akan detect kita punya sickle cell gene. Right. So this probe will hybridize to DNA from homozygotes of sickle cell anemia but not from the normal individual. Okay, so how we do? We get the 19 residue oligonucleotide from the sickle cell gene yang ada masalah tu. So once we get the samples, DNA or RNA, and then we'll uh, put this sickle cell uh, 19 residue oligonucleotide probes ni ke dalam kita punya samples. So kalau ada 19 residue ni melekat pada kita punya uh, samples, so we assume that this a sample have a sickle cell anemia patient. Right. Okay, continue. Detection of microorganism by DNA hybridizations. Okay, number one, DNA probes is used to detect the presence of target DNA. Okay. Number two, DNA sequence of probes is complementary to the target. So make sure it's a complementary. Otherwise, our works will be wasted. The probe will specifically anneal to the target sequence only. Okay, so make sure it's a very tight target and not to any other daily sequences. For example, if you rest, uh, refresh back, make sure, for example, we are, we are going to find the sickle cell anemia. So it's a have a 19 residue oligonucleotide probes. Otherwise, kita akan dapat sample tersebut. Eh? That's meaning of this one. Eh? Do not to add any other DNA sequence. Okay. So other examples that we're using for this process to detect anthrax. Okay. So what is anthrax? Anthrax come from the bacillus anthraxis. It's one of the bacteria. So why we need to do or why, what the causes of the anthrax? They use for the bioweapon because of the rapid spread through air, infectious and high fatality. So, apa yang akan ada dalam, uh, why we call it by weapon eh? Because this anthrax or bacillus anthraxis have what we call spores. And it's remain valuable for long time in the soil. So, this is not mati sebab dia spore. So, that's, that why, that's why we need what we call uh, methods. It's very quick accurate and specific okay so what's meaning of quick accurate and specific so quick can be done in less than 24 hours which means no time to culture the bacteria takes too long so bacteria at least uh, more than 24 hours eh, to dapat result certain bacteria eh. accurate will not miss okay 
In other words, it's no false or negative. What's mean of false negative? A result that appear negative when it should not be. For example, a false negative will be it a particular test designed to detect cancer return a negative result. But person actually does not have cancer. That's mean of false negative. Okay. So result adalah negative, tapi sebenarnya tidak. Itulah false negative. Right. Number third is specific. Will not detect other organisms. Means it only detects bacillus and thracis only. In other, in other words, there are no false positive. So what is mean false positive definitions? A test result that is incorrect because tests indicate a condition of finding does not, not exist. For example, syphilis. Right? That's mean false positive and false negative. Okay? So for false negative, the result appear negative, but it should not be. False positive, a result is incorrect because test indicate the condition of finding is does not exist. Okay. So the process, first of all, we have to find the DNA probes for bacillus and thracis. So what is DNA probe? A gene or sequence of DNA that's a unique specific to B and thracis. Okay. So this means that it will not present in any other organisms. So we only want the DNA sequence and only specific species. For this case, we're using a bacillus and thracis. So that probe or DNA probe for bacillus and we have to label. There are three types of labels or probes that we can use for this experiment about detecting the bacillus and thracis. Number one, of course, we're using a radioactive molecule. For example, potassium 32. Number two, fluorescent label. And last one will be chemical luminescence label. Okay, so in certain blood, we're using the radioactive molecule. So this one experiment is a value added because of the presence of probes. Either we're using a fluorescent or chemical luminescence or radioactive molecules. So sekarang kita pakai dah eh, radioactive molecule because it's very highly uh, dangerous eh, can cause cancer. So we go for the other two, it's a fluorescent and chemical luminescence. Alright, so the radioactive nucleotide is incorporated to the DNA probes using a method what we call NIC translations. Okay, so basically some normal nucleotide are removed from the probes and replaced with the radioactive ones. Okay, so now today the preferred way to label a rope is by the method called randomly prime synthesis. So if you say about radioactive nucleotide, kita akan pakaikan what we call method is called NIC translations. So now kita tak pakai dah NIC translation tu ataupun nucleotide radioactive. Now we're using what we call probe yang lebih tidak radioactive. So the method will be changed by using randomly prime synthesis. So untuk probe yang radioactive is very specific. But now today, so this word tells now today, when sekarang ni, we're using other than radioactive nucleotide. So what the label we use is FITC. It's what we call fluorescent isothiocyanates. Okay. So it's not very, it's not the radioactive nucleotide actually. So the probe must be must also be denatured before it is used. So kalau kita pakai uh, FITC or fluorescent iso thiocyanate, the method what we call randomly prime synthesis. Okay, so how the process? So you can see the picture here. So kalau uh, radioactive nucleotide, ada juga probe di sini eh. Tapi this one kita pakai FITC. So this picture uh, example of the NIC translations. Picture merah ni eh. Okay. Please bear in mind eh. This one example of Nick translation. Why? Because the word Nick strand here. Okay. So let's say we have a four types of nucleotide. So this nucleotide named by deoxynucleotide triphosphates. And then of course we have a DNA polymerase. So DNA polymerase to do the polymer for DNA. Alright. This is our strands or target yang kita nak masukkan. Yang kita nak detect. 
It's an index trend, eh? All right. So we have to label our nucleotide here. Okay, and then the process of DNA polymerase, sorry, DNA polymerase will be done here. Okay, so what about FITC? So FITC will label the whole sequence here. So compared with the NIC translated, this one is randomly prime sequence. So let's say kita ada uh, two of FITC here in the one sequence. They can detect their punya complementary dalam kita punya DNA or samples. So once berlaku, dia akan jalankan proses covalent bond between this complementary process. Right? So kita akan detect lah present of DNA probe here. So we done the process of DNA hybridizations. First of all, we have to extract our DNA samples from where? There's a, there's a lots of sample here from bacteria culture, soils, water, blood, bloody tissue, foods and almost anything eh okay so we have to done the process of immobilize the samples what's meaning of immobilize in the words of Malay kita tak gerakkan sample tu kita jangan bagi dia bergerak so kita kena letakkan dia satu benda yang intact for example our nylon membranes so why DNA can combine with the nylon membranes because of the presence of charges okay let's say our DNA is positive charges nylon membrane must be in the negative charges. That's why it can be binding into the nylon membranes. Same with the nitrocellulose. Okay. So we have to denature our DNA by using the sodium hydroxide. And then we have to put the labels. Okay, this is a label inside our samples. So the probe we only have the rise to its complementary target and nothing else. Okay, so make sure we wash our sample or hand hybrid probes. Okay, ada juga probe yang tak bercantum dengan kita punya sample. So, kita kena buang. Last one, we have to detect the probe label by using the process of autoadogram or UV lights. Alright, this example of the process, what we call dot blot. Okay, so example of the sample yang kita buat juga proses tadi. is what we call dot blot. Okay, so the process tadi yang kita buat, okay, kita dapatkan sample and uh, anthraxis. So, this is the result. Okay. So, before we explain about this picture, we have to read all the legend here, okay. So, the positive and negative controls. So, why we need positive negative controls to make sure our result is valid. Okay. So, it will show the positive result and negative result. Positive control and negative control. So the positive control, our can dapat dapat bulat ni, alright. So negative control will be nothing here, okay. So no signal, we call it as a negative result. So tak ada, eh? okay. So positive signal, make sure it is same like the our positive control, okay. So what's meaning positive signal? Anthrax bacillus is present in or present present in the samples, okay. So what about weak positive? Load more samples and repeat the essay. So kita boleh ulang balik eksperimen ni dengan kita banyakkan sampel dan juga repeat the essays. Alright. So example of the dots. Okay, awak dapat result dots eh. So this is example of the dot block methods. It's still lagi dalam uh, result of DNA hybridization eh. Ataupun result dalam softened blocks. Okay. So, uh, why uh, the process of DNA hybridization happen eh? and the factors that affect the DNA hybridizations? Okay. So, number one will be the degree of homolog, homology. So, why similar meaning of homology or degree of homology? It more on refer or how the similar is a prop sequence to the target sequence. Okay. So, make sure our uh, props and the target is re relatively similar about 80%. Okay, the best is 100%. Okay, if the DNA sequence of probe is exactly the same as the target, then we have 100% of perfect homolog. Okay, which means that the sequence of ATCG daripada probe dan juga sample mestilah bersama. Sama eh. Okay, 100%. It means that the high homology between probes and the targets, the stronger hybridization eh, of course eh. 
Alright, so the probe and the target sequence may not have to be exactly complementary. Okay, sometimes we would like to be a bit more flexible at the different strain of the same bacteria. Species may have small different in their DNA sequence. So mostly uh, species of bacteria, right, have uh, what we call slightly different in the DNA sequence. Tapi yang penting kita detect sequence yang present in each of the species, right? So, uh, a little bit strange between the same bacteria species, we calling a stringency of the hybridizations. That's meaning of stringency of hybridizations. Okay. A small difference of the DNA sequence in all bacteria species. So, uh, in other words, the factor that influencing the RNA of DNA hybridization, number one, the probes, concentrations, okay. Number two, sequence, okay. So why we need, why would the process of sequence happen? Because the GC have the bonding and AT have a bonding also, eh? So what's the difference between GC and AT? A present of hydrogen bonding. So GC have a three hydrogen bonding, AT have a two hydrogen bonding. So the difference is the melting point of each of the uh, bonds of the GC and AT. Eh? And last one will be stringency, the, dis the difference between each of DNA, small small portion of DNA between all species. Okay, uh, probe concentrations. The higher the probe concentration, the faster hybridization occurs. Okay. But, however, the higher of the probe concentration, the higher the blood by group backgrounds. Okay. Probes will stick everywhere. Okay. So, let's say kita buat sample. Tapi ada juga kita punya probe yang warna dia lebih kepada background. So, kita kena kurangkan juga. Okay, so make sure uh, concentration is not more than uh, that if you've done the process of experiment. Eh? But in the low probe concentration, the long incubation overnight usually produce the best results. So, most, mostly kita akan gunakan low lah probe concentration. Eh? But the incubation will be long. Kalau high, Faster, but the background is very, uh, not very good eh, okay. Stringency is the key concept in all nucleic acid detection experiment. We can adjust the stringency so that the only exactly DNA or RNA sequence match. Or we can allow some mismatching. We do this mostly by modifying wash condition as split sorts. Okay, so in the stringency, why we need salt? Because high salt wash hybrid are more stable, more RNA stuck, blood is less stringent. If we use a low salt wash, hybrid are less stable and blood is more stringent. Okay, another one, we're using a temperature. So on stringency, we have to condition. Eh? Either we use a salts or either we use a temperature. So, the two can mempengaruhi stringency of the nucleic acid detection. Okay. So, if we say about temperature, nucleic acid denatured or hel helix melts at the high temperature. High temperature, less stable and more stringent. Okay. So, we use our, what we call pulse field gelatophoresis or PFGE. Okay. What's meaning of PFGE? It's a conjugate with the rare cutter restriction endonuclease or restriction enzymes that recognize the CPG island. CPG island is C and G. Island in genomic DNA of vertebrates. So what is CPG island? It occur at the low frequency in humans or other vertebrates. DNA which result in a few recognition sites and a very small numbers of large fragments around megabyte range. Okay, so CPG ni akan berlaku eh, bila kita gunakan pulse field gel process. Okay, so continue. <coughs> okay, this example of process of uh, PFGC. G. Let's say we have the centrifuge and blood. Okay, we collect the blood. 
you've done the process of centrifugations. So once you've done the centrifugations, we have the three layer. Okay, kita emparkan. In other words, the future is emparan. Okay, put inside the machine. And then we get the three layers here. So the upper part is our cells. In the middle is our platelet. And last one will be our plasma. Okay. So where is our uh, where is our uh, white blood cells? In the middles. Yang putih ni. Okay. Yang atas ni adalah kita punya red blood cells. Right. So we take our white blood cells. Why we have white blood cells? White blood cells have a nucleus. So dalam nucleus ada DNA. And we mix with the molten agarose. Okay, the example of process of PFGE. So we transfer mix into the cavities in the block forming mold and allow agar to solidify. It. So kita akan dapat lah entrapped cells and pour in agarose. Okay, so we have to incubate this entrapped entrap cells ni dengan proteinase K is enzyme and SDS. Okay. So we have to inactivate our protein SK yang kita incubate tadi and wash to remove all the cell debris. Okay. So entrap with the high molecular weight DNA and digest with the rare cutting restriction nucleases. Okay. And then we have to insert blocks into the well of agros gels. Okay. So we put inside this uh, agros gel. Okay. So that E1, E2, E1, E2, and E2, eh? this one is what we call uh, electrode pair. Electrode pair, okay, electrode. Eh? So E1, negative, E1, E jauh ni, uh, the green one is a positive. So E2, E2 here. So E1, E2 ni adalah kita punya electrodes. So these electrodes are the positive negative juga. Right. And then we done the process of gel electrophoresis. Periodic switching pulsing of the power between electrode pair E1 and E2, we get a migration of the uh, DNA. Okay. So this one to overcome our process of stringency juga. Okay. So bila kita jalankan proses ni, kita boleh dapat banyak kita punya sequence. Okay. That's meaning of CPG island ni. So screening of the library for the clone carrying a gene of interest. So a clone carrying the gene of interest can be identified with the nucleic acid probes, which is having sequence complementary to the genes. So that process, what we call nucleic acid hybridizations. Okay, now we are going to screen our library for clones carrying the genes of interest. Library ni adalah kita punya genome. Okay. So for, first of all, the probe can be synthesized that is complementary to the genes of interest. So for example, kita ada gene of interest. Eh? So this is the picture we show 5 prime to 3 prime. So make sure this is uh, our samples DNA. Okay. So kalau kita nak buat probe, kita mesti ada alau, alau, laluan dia, sorry apa, uh, mesti ada dia punya vice versa. So we change back eh, from 3 to 5. This is our probes. So this probe will detect the same inside our DNA. So it uh, color in the yellow uh, orange here. Okay. So DNA probe can be used to screen a large number of clones simultaneously for the genes of interest. So which part is going to be cloned is our probes here. Okay. Once identified, the clone is carrying the gene of interest can be cultured. Okay. So that's why we get uh, a lot of uh, example, our insulin and sebagainya, okay? So, immobilize the target DNA. DNA molecules are highly charged with negative, okay? So, now we know that the DNA is a negative charge, right? So, that's why it can bind with the positive charges membrane like nylon or nitrocellulose. So, please bear in mind, DNA molecule is negative charges, okay? So, um, Acronym tadi, kalau katakan DNA positif, kita punya membrane tu negatif. So, dalam proses ni, actually DNA is our negative charges. So, the membrane is a positive charges, right? That's why it can be bind to the nylon or cetro, nitrocellulose. Okay, konsep dia macam kita punya magnet eh. 
So the DNA is then fixed onto the membrane support by the ultraviolets and cross-linking or drying in the vacuums. Okay, so sometimes we have to cut our DNA into the small pieces. Why? Because of the words of stringency today, okay? Helps them to bind the better, right? So some species have a unique or smaller portion inside the DNA, that being the differences between species. That's my stringency. And then we have to denature our DNA usually by the treatment of sodium hydroxides. Okay, so how we will mobilize our target DNA because of DNA is negative charges, it must bind with the nylon or central cellulose. So, in the example of process of, if we say about nylon membranes, DNA probes, one example of the process of southern blots or dot blots. Okay. So, now we have to hybrid or label denatured probe to the fixed or denatured targets. Okay. So the probe is added to the membrane with a fixed target DNA and the condition are adjusted for favor to re -annealing. So the DNA probe will only hybridize if it can find its complementary sequence within the fixed target DNA. Okay. So remember this, eh? so the word C is self. Eh? However, sometimes we would like to be a bit more flexible as different strains of the same bacteria species may have small difference in their DNA sequence. Okay, how? For example, not be perfect homolog. Okay, so that's why we call it a stringency of hybridization. Okay, it's different strain of the same bacteria species may have the small difference in their DNA sequence. So while, how we overcome this one? We using the PFGE methods. So, kenapa kita guna PFGE? Sebab kita boleh potong lagi kecil, lagi halus kita punya DNA. So, make sure kita tahu the different strain or different, smallest difference between DNA sequence of the samples or bacteria. Right? Okay, in C2 hybridizations, okay, it's a probe is hybridized to the chromosome preparations on the microscopic slide or to RNA of the tissue fixed on the slides. So we're doing the process of the DNA say using the clone target DNA. So that's what's meaning of libraries. Libraries is our clone target DNA and micro arrays. Okay. So there are two types of in situ hybridization. Number one will be the colony hybridization or refer to our uh, target DNA libraries. And number two is plaque lift hybridizations. So these two examples of in situ hybridization process. So let's say we have a nitrocellulose, right? Place the membrane on top of agar containing separate bacteria colonies. Okay. So allow original cell to recover. So from the sample, eh, we have to do the do two process. Either we're doing the process of replica filter on the new agar or master plate. Okay. So if we say we go to master plate, okay, we have to take one sample from there or bacteria colonies and grow inside the liquid structure, liquid cultures, and allow original cell to be covered. Okay. So if we say about replica filter on the new agar, okay, we have to invert membrane and lay over the new agar surface and allow colonies to regenerate on top of the filter. Okay, remove the membrane with the attached colonies and soak in the success solutions. So we have to done the process of denatured, neutralize, wash, and dry and fix DNA. So all the bacteria will be fixed on the membranes. Okay. So once the fixed kat sini, kita boleh jalankan proses DNA hybridizations. Okay. So we can hybrid with the label, probes, wash, and done the process of auto radiography. Okay. So, kenapa kita boleh buat eh? Sebab kita, satu, kita dapatkan sample tu sendiri. Yang kedua, kita letak nylon membranes to spot. Okay, so we done the process of extract samples, films, okay. So now we can identify positive colony and pick into the liquid cultures. Okay, so dekat sini result dia adalah this one eh, example of the uh, colony which have the positive colony eh. So that colony kita boleh ambil dan kita boleh growkan dalam 
liquid cultures. Let's say we have we're going to do the process of insulin, for example. So the situ kita tahu, or in other words, to detect the disease, okay, genetic disease, right? Or we're going to uh, detect. Uh, so this example of bacteria. So bacteria anthracis. Okay. Right. Is there any question? Before we go further for our lectures. Okay, ada soalan ke sebelum kita sambung kita punya lecture lain? No, on sir. DNA microarray? Yeah? No, sir. No? Would you like to take five for today's lectures? Awak nak, nak lihat yes. lima minit ke? Yes. Okay, so I'm going to show you the video about uh, gene expression analysis. So, after finish that video, all you, kita akan sambung balik kita punya lecture. Right? These four cells represent different clinical isolates of the same species of bacteria. Each contains plasmid DNA, but the plasmids in one isolate may not be the same as the plasmids in another isolate. We can purify the plasmid DNA from the isolates and use two procedures, gel electrophoresis and southern blotting to compare these plasmids. As a first step, we can use gel electrophoresis to examine the plasmids in their native form. Blue loading buffer is added to an aliquot of the plasmid sample, and the mixture is loaded into wells of a jello-like slab made of a polysaccharide material called agarose. The agarose contains microscopic pores through which the DNA can travel. An electric current draws the negatively charged DNA through the gel toward the positive electrode. The positions of the DNA on the agarose gel indicate the sizes of the plasmids. Smaller pieces of DNA migrate faster than larger ones through the agarose pores because larger pieces meet with more resistance. In this example, the plasmids in lanes A through D are similar in size. The plasmid in lane C migrates slower than the others and is therefore a little larger. Although the plasmids in A, B, and D appear to be the same, we must perform other tests before we can come to this conclusion. Our next step is to add enzymes called restriction enzymes to the plasmids. An example of a restriction enzyme is ECOR1. A restriction enzyme cuts the DNA at a particular recognition sequence. ECOR1 recognizes and cuts the sequence GAATTC. If the plasmids in the different tubes are identical in sequence, they should have the same number of ECOR1 recognition sequences. The type of plasmid in this particular sample can be cut in four places with ECOR1, producing four fragments of different sizes, represented here as different colors. When the fragments are loaded on a gel and electrophoresed, the fragments separate from each other. The slower bands on the gel contain larger fragments, and the faster bands contain smaller fragments. 
the patterns of fragments in lanes A and B appear identical. On the other hand, the patterns of fragments in lanes C and D appear unique. Are the DNA sequences and fragments in lanes A and B the same or nearly so? And is there any similarity between them and any of the fragments in lanes C and D? To answer this question, we perform what is called a southern blot. An apparatus is set up to transfer the DNA in the gel onto a solid support, such as nitrocellulose paper. The gel is placed on top of a sponge, soaking in an alkaline solution. Nitrocellulose paper is placed on top of the gel, and a stack of paper towels is added on top of the nitrocellulose. The solution is drawn up the stack. The DNA denatures in the alkaline solution as it's carried up the stack. The DNA stops traveling when it reaches the nitrocellulose. If we could see the DNA on the nitrocellulose paper, it would show the same pattern of DNA bands as existed on the agarose gel. We place the nitrocellulose paper into a plastic bag and add a solution containing a radioactive single-stranded DNA called a probe. In this case, the probe consists of all the fragments from plasmid A. During an incubation period, the probe anneals to complementary sequences, forming base pairs with the DNA in some of the bands on the paper. The excess probe is washed off. The only probe that remains on the nitrocellulose paper is the probe that has annealed to complementary DNA on the paper. After the probe is washed off, the paper is overlaid with x-ray film. The film and nitrocellulose are kept in the dark for a period of time, and then the researcher develops the film. The radioactivity in the probe creates black bands on the x-ray film, which is called an autoradiograph. The autoradiograph provides more evidence that plasmids A and B are the same or very similar. However, plasmid D is unrelated to plasmid A, from which the radioactive probe was derived. Plasmid C has some similarity to plasmid A, but the similar sequences are found on different sized DNA fragments. The autoradiograph gives us more information than the agarose gel on its own. All right, so we're going to continue our uh, lectures, okay, after five minute breaks. So now we're going to uh, know about a little bit about uh, DNA microarray. So actually DNA microarray ni, okay, is the works yang kita belajar dalam chapter 7 lah itu. All right, so siapa-siapa uh, ingat tentang Maxim uh, Gilbert's or a modern DNA sequencing eh. We're using a Sanger methods. Okay, so what's different between Maxim Gilbert and Sanger methods? Okay, so from that, awak tahu eh, apa beza antara dua proses tersebut eh? Is there any question about DNA microarray? Ada soalan tentang microarray tak? Tak ada, sir. Alright, so uh, this DNA microarray will present the result yang kita nampak dalam DNA sequence. Okay. So the process concept sama macam kita punya process uh, PCR. Okay. So DNA microarray adalah process how the DNA abbreviation will happen in the modern eh. Right. So we continue our lectures today about DNA microarray. Okay. This is example of the picture how DNA microarray works. Okay. So definition about the DNA microarray. Number one, we must have a target. So target adalah kita punya library eh. Okay. For example, nucleic acid cDNA, C represent eh, complementary. So bukannya kita punya DNA, so it's complementary. Means that a sequence yang lain daripada kita punya DNA. More on the copy. 
So DNA is our library. So kita ada C DNA. C DNA itu must be similar with our uh, library. Alright. So sample whose identity and quantity are been measured. Okay. Quant uh, identity means sample apa kita buat. So sample for example our punya sample bacillus anthracis. Quantity the amount. Is it 100 meg base pair, mega base pair ataupun 1 giga base, uh, giga base pair dan sebagainya. Okay. For example, so kenapa Maxim Gilbert dengan single kita buat tu tak boleh guna sebab single single matters hanya sampai 900 uh, base pair saja. So dalam proses ni kita kena lebih daripada tu. So using a microarray. In the other word, fluoro, fluorophore, okay, usually green and red label attached to the target of enable visualization, visualizing express, expressions, okay. So, awak dah boleh tentang gene expression, so gene exp, uh, DNA or gene expression. So, gene expression akan expresskan dia, okay, dalam bentuk apa eh. For example, kalau kita nak tahu gene to express, mestilah merujuk kepada kita punya hasil dia, okay. So, kita ada kita punya nukotype, so that nukotype we express to be our hand, for example, our skins for example eh. That's mean our expressions. Okay. So we're using what we call microarray works as a reversed hybridization methods. Reverse eh. Okay. That's why we use it. Uh, that's why the process is to get the uh, same as a cDNA. Alright. Which is converting the mRNA to cDNA 3 prime 5 prime with a TTTT at the end. So probes and attach nucleic acid with the known sequence of a DNA chips. So kita ada chips eh dalam kita punya microarray tu. So dalam chips tu kita gunakan dalam proses microarray. So the basic step for microarray, number one is to obtain the cells with the genes. Okay. So obtain the cells with the genes that are needed for the analysis. Number two, isolate the mRNA using extraction buffer. Okay. So we remove the buffer with RNA. So the mRNA will be 5 prime to 3 prime with the repeating AAA. Because of what? Dalam sample ni kita ada TTTN. So that one mRNA, uh, mRNA mesti ada kita punya lawan dia AAA. Alright. So kenapa pakai TTT dengan kenapa dia pakai AAA? Sebab TTT ni refer to our cDNA. Dia bukan mRNA, cDNA. Tapi dalam kita punya mRNA kita ada A. Betul tak? So apa beza dia? Beza dia kalau mRNA kita mesti pakai U eh. So this one is more on the A. Sebab mRNA tu memang ada A. So that's the word all about eh. Okay. Ayat kat sini dengan ayat kat sini beza dia. Alright. So and then convert each mRNA into the colored cDNA. Okay. So how we colored? We using what we call fluorophore. Okay, target label or probes. So this is what we call fluorophore. Okay, fluorophore ni adalah jenis probes yang boleh visualize eh. Maknanya dia mesti ada tiga bahan tersebut yang tadi tu. Is it uh, what we call apa tu? Radioactive label or chemical illumination or what we call satu lagi fluorescent. Okay, or fluorophore, right? Continue with the mRNA degraded with reverse this reverse the cDNA created. So maknanya sampel yang kita dapat tu akan diubah menjadi cDNA. So sampel kita masukkan dalam kita punya kali kita dalam bentuk mRNA. Okay. And then it will mix the color sample of the cDNA. So microarray or DNA chips. Okay macam mana bentuk microarray or DNA chips sebut macam ni eh. Alright. It's about 28 millimeter. Uh, and 18 millimeter longs. Okay. So each of the plot. Dia macam dot plot juga tapi dia lebih kepada plot dalam tu eh. So each of the plot ni size ni lebih kurang 1.4, 1.4 of millimeters. Okay. So we have a lots of uh, plot here. Okay. So we can each of it have we can put the probes. Okay. So every spot on the chips represent a different coding sequence from the different genes. Okay. So each spot on the chip is made up of the DNA probes. 
that can pair with the cDNA that was created. Okay, so cDNA ada boleh created kat situ eh, alright. So we need to incubate our mixed cDNA and the chips DNA with the yield of some pairings. Okay, and we have to wash about the cDNA to see what has bound to the microarray. Okay, so tak semua eh akan masuk, akan detect. So make sure kita punya probe tu boleh detect dalam kita punya cDNA. So now we have to visualize our bound cDNA. So kita dah wash. So sekarang ni apa result yang kita dapat daripada microarray chips tersebut. Okay. So the slide with the microarray chips is placed inside a dark box. Why we need the dark box? Because we have to visualize our fluorescent label. So bila kita tutup lampu, baru kita akan nampak fluorescent eh. Okay. So we can, we have to scan it with a high resolution laser that detect the bounds of fluorescent labels. So macam mana kita punya apa tu? Uh, kita punya fluorescent will be uh, glow in the dark by using the energy from resolution of lasers. So laser akan cut, akan akan detect pewarnaan tu eh, fluorescent tu. So all the fluorescent label bound will give the information and image and then to send to the computer for analysis. So concept process ni dengan kita punya proses uh, DNA sequencing sama eh. Okay. So dia akan detect present of fluorescent labels. Kalau ingat balik awak punya DNA sequencing chapter 7 tu. Right. So now we have to analyze our data. Okay. It will create a ratio image. So same concept macam kita punya dot blot. Okay. Nampak ni. If we say terlalu cahaya uh, positif negatif. Ingat balik positif negatif eh. Kalau positif negatif, dia akan detect banyak eh. Cuma beza dekat sini, dia akan ada dua present warna. Hijau ataupun merah. Okay. And greens. Okay. What is green, what is red and what is yellow. Greens image signal expression in one condition. Red image signal express in one condition and yellow image signal expression in both condition. Kalau green, satu. Merah, satu. If we say you see here from the word uh, warna yellow, it represent both. Is it red or green? So, apa maksud red, green and yellow ni? Okay. Awak kena tengok sample dia. Mostly sample yang kita gunakan dalam proses microarray. For example, cancer for example eh. Normal cells and cancer cells. Okay, let's say green is the normal cells. Red is our cancer cells. Yellow is both because it represent our genetic. So kalau both tu maknanya ada gene yang kita okay antara dua species. For example, species human ni memang betul sama lah. Tapi kalau uh, cancer mesti ada express genetic yang menyebabkan dia berlaku proses cancer. That's why we call it process of probe making. Okay. So capacity ataupun berapa banyak eh kita boleh dapat dalam proses microarray both is not limited to human genetic material which mean can be used for all species bacteria for example okay, plants right on the process of microarray okay number two can be displayed thousand of different genes okay because of the dot tadi eh? okay hole tadi it depends on the chip size okay if we say hundreds nucleotides the size of the plot tu satu centimeter uh, centigrade eh okay or in 100,000 of nucleotides, about 10 centimeter centigrade. So, ini represent the hole, size holes eh, yang bulat tu eh, okay. Size yang ni. This one eh, right. This represent this one eh, okay. So, either kita letak 100 nucleotides atau kita letak lebih daripada 100. Right. Okay, last one, capacity, allow the study of multiple genes at once. Okay. So types of microarray, pre-synthesized nucleotides exit bulk the cDNA. Oligonucleotide synthesis in situ, we create the cDNA in questions. Okay. There are types of microarray, sama ada kita pakai pre-synthesis of nucleotide or oligonucleotide synthesis in situ. Sama ada kita pakai uh, yang kita, kita, kita dapatkan cDNA sendiri ataupun kita buat cDNA sendiri. Alright, that's meaning of two types of microarray. Alright, so uh, what is uh, 
MyCore all about. So application yang kita gunakan dalam MyCore, number one, identify the genes and genes mutation of different types of disease, for example, cancer. Okay, number two, identifying the expression level or quantity of genes. Is it muted or not? That's meaning of two process here, eh? okay. Okay, so identify the gene and gene mutation of the different types of disease such as cancer and identify the expression level of the quantity of genes. Okay, so express, expression level, eh? okay, kat mana gene express, eh? for example, uh, kita nak tengok sel tersebut, apa tu, uh, ataupun tumbuhan, eh? uh, gene mana yang boleh menghalang penyakit, uh, apa tu, cancer pada pokok, uh, expression of that, eh? right. Alright, so that's all for today's DNA hybridization. It's more on recaps or revise back. Is there any question about uh, today's uh, recaps? Ada soalan tak? Students? Uh, no, sir. No, okay. sir. All right. So how about your test? Macam mana test? Test satu, okey, susah. Uh. Apa? Uh. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, I will uh, off the record today. <laughs>